Hello dear students, good evening and welcome to this live stream of the very important topic of the statement problems concerning speed and time. A very important topic for all class 8th, 9th, 10th students and especially for class 10 students, the three problems which I am going to solve today they are very, very frequently asked in board examinations and obviously those who are preparing for competitions, they can be benefited by watching this live stream today. This is the important topic of linear equations in two variables and the questions based on speed and time are often confused by the students. So today, I'll have these three questions solved in a simple manner and I'll, I'll explain all the steps to you so that you can understand these important questions for board exams. So as my students start to join in, I will write the first question for today on the board. And in the meanwhile, more of my students can gear up for the session. Now, this is the first question which I am going to take up today. A man travels 600 kilometers partly by train and partly by car. If he travels 400 kilometers by train and the rest by car, he takes six and a half hours. But if he travels 200 kilometers by train and the rest by car, he takes half hour longer. So we need to find the speeds of train and car. So this is the first question which I am going to undertake for today. Many of my students are asking me to answer the one question x minus y equal to 3. I think that was the equation which we got. Let me just tell you students those who have joined in just now, I don't think they will be able to understand that. So I will take just 20 seconds to explain that. Suppose you get both the equations as same. Then we have to write that we have more than one solutions of such kind of questions. So single solutions cannot be found out. So you have to leave the question then and they are stating that there are infinitely many solutions of the question. So I hope that clears the doubt that we had other day. Now we can have this question. Now see, the question goes like this. There is a total distance of 600 kilometers to be covered by a man and he is traveling that 600 kilometers partly by train and partly by car. So some of the distance is traveled by train and other part of the distance is traveled by car. Now there are two conditions which are given. The first condition is that if he travels 400 kilometers by train, so out of 600, 400 is traveled by train and the rest that is 200 kilometers by car, then he is taking an overall time of six and a half hours. So this is the first condition. And if he reverses the distances, that is if he travels 200 kilometers by train and rest means 400 kilometers by car, then he is taking half an hour longer. That means if he was taking six and a half hours earlier, now he is taking seven hours. So now under these two 
statements, we need to find the speeds of the two vehicles that is train and car. So, how do you go about solving this? Very important for class 10 students, kindly pay attention here. All the steps I'll be doing on the board and uh, simultaneously you can learn and practice these questions from some refresher books. You can take extra questions. Okay, so whenever, see we have a total distance given 600 kilometers, you have to assume the speeds of the two vehicles, let the speed of train be x kmph kilometer per hour and let the speed of car be y kmph. In these type of questions, you need to apply the formula for finding the time. So the formula for finding the time, it is given by distance upon speed. So this is the formula which we are going to use. Now why we are using this formula? It is because distance upon speed is time and overall time is given in the question. So whatever variable is given in the question, we have to use the formula for that. So in the first condition, distance is 400 kilometers by train and the speed of the train is x. So if you write 400 upon x, that means we have obtained the time taken by the train to cover 400 kilometers. Now simultaneously, the rest of the distance that is 200 kilometers is covered by car and the speed of the car is y. So distance upon speed, this is the time taken by the car to cover 200 kilometers. So now you can add these two. This gives you the total time and the total time is given in the question as six and a half hours. So you can equate it to six and a half. What is six and a half? It is 13 by two. So this gives us the first equation. I hope that is clear. Now we can move on to the second equation and frame the second linear equation. How do you do that? If it travels 200 kilometers by train, now the distance is 200 kilometers and it is covered by train. So this uh, distance upon speed of train x, this is the time taken and the rest by car. So rest means 400, total distance is 600. By car means speed of car is y. Now he is taking half an hour longer. So that means six and a half plus half, the total time becomes seven hours. Now these are the two equations which we need to solve to get to our answer and to find the speeds of train and car. Already some of my answers are answering, uh, uh, some of my answers which I have listed here are obtained by my viewers. So I'm glad some of you already know the methods, but it's important to know the logic behind it. So let's have how to the solution of this. Now how to have the values of x and y from this. Now there's one method in which you can reduce them to linear form because the variable x and y are in the denominators, but you can directly ap apply equating coefficients method here. See here we have 400 and here we have 200. So you can just multiply this by two. So this will become 400. So I'll write both the equations again, 400 upon x plus 200 upon y gives us 13 upon 2 and if you multiply this by 2 you get 400 upon x plus 800 upon y equal to 14 and now you can subtract these two equations because one of the terms of containing x will be cancelled and 200 minus 800 that gives you minus 600 upon y equal to 13 by 2 is 6.5 so 6.5 minus 14 is 6.5 minus 14 so 14 and 7.5 so this is minus 15 by 2 or else you can subtract it like this 13 by 2 minus 14 so 13 minus 28 by 2 this gives you minus 15 by 2 so I have written that here so negative cancels on both sides and now you have the value of y from here so y comes out to be 600 into 2 upon 15 and you can cancel this 15, 40 times. So y comes out to be 80 kmph. So as already given by many of my students, the value of y is 80 kilometer per hour. Now, 
how about the value of x so after having got the value of one variable you can put this value in any of these two equations which we have framed here these two equations so i am putting it in the first equation 400 upon x plus 200 upon y y is 80 gives us 13 by 2 so now you can solve this for getting the value of x so here you have 5 by 2 so 13 by 2 minus 5 by 2 that is 8 by 2 4 so x comes out to be 100 so you see students therefore the value of x that is the speed of train is 100 kmph and y the speed of car is 80 kmph so this is the exact way in which we have to solve this question very very important for board exams and all internal exams which may be faced by the students during the course of this session so questions on speed are obviously the ones on which you have to spend time i hope the question is clear to you students because we will be using the same concept in our next question also so if you have any doubts you can ask and it is very important to know all the steps so just watch all the steps you can take a screenshot of the board also if you want the exact solution you can just click a photo of the screen so that you have the exact steps with you whenever you are solving questions yourself okay i'm glad that most of you have no doubts here so let's have another question now this question is also based on finding speeds speed and time but a slightly different question this time a question of upstream and downstream motion of boats so the question goes like this a boat goes 24 kilometers upstream and 28 kilometer downstream in 6 hours second condition it can go 30 kilometer upstream and 21 kilometer downstream in 6 and 1/2 hours so you need to find the speed of boat in still water and the speed of stream so here are the two variables which we have to find out in this question this is a question of upstream and downstream motion of boats uh kajul thanks for your compliment and we can get on with the question now you can join in every monday to friday 7:30 pm for more topics of mathematics so upstream and downstream motion questions are again questions which are often confused by the students so let me just clear the concept of upstream and downstream motion of boats see whenever a boat is moving it has its own speed also so that is called speed of boat in still water so if the water is stagnant that is it is not flowing then the speed of boat is called speed of boat in still water but there is another speed that is the speed with which the river or the stream is flowing that is the speed of stream so in such questions you have to assume these two variables as x and y so let us assume them let 
speed of boat in still water b x kmph and speed of stream b y kmph see these two speeds that is individual speeds of the boat and the speed of the stream they are not directly used in the question why because the boat is either moving along with the stream that is called downstream or against the stream flow of the stream that is called upstream so what happens when the boat moves upstream therefore speed while moving upstream it is obtained by subtracting x and y so x minus y is the speed of boat while it moves upstream and speed of boat when it moves downstream is obtained by adding x and y now these are the two speeds which we have to use in the question for framing the equations you can just see it once okay now we again have to use the formula for time that is distance by speed every time in speed and time questions we use the formula for time because the total time is always given in the question now see according to question it can go 30 km upstream now see in the first case it is given 24 km upstream so 24 km is the distance so if we divide the distance by the speed 24 kilometers is done upstream so what is the speed upstream it is x minus y so divided by x minus y this gives us the time to go 24 kilometers upstream but there is something else also and 28 kilometer downstream now 28 kilometers is the distance and what is the motion like it is like downstream so whenever the motion is downstream then speed is x plus y so divide the distance by speed you get the time so we have added the two times so what is the total time it is given as 6 hours so it gets equated to 6 so this is the first equation so if you learn this concept once i think you will not forget it forget it for life now let us have the second equation because there are two variables so we need to have two equations Similarly, it can go 30 km upstream. So now 30 km is the distance and upstream motion speed is x minus y. Plus, along with that, we have 21 km downstream. So 21 km is the distance and downstream speed is x plus y. And what happens? 6 and a half hours. 6 and a half is 13 by 2. So students, here we have two equations in two variables which we have to solve to get the values of x and y now how do you get to the answer after having framed the equations now see there is a common factor here i will cancel out 2 from the 3 terms here because 24 is divisible by 2 28 is divisible by 2 and 6 is divisible by 2 whereas here 13 is a prime number so we cannot cancel out any common factor so this equation becomes 12 upon x minus y and 14 upon x plus y equal to 3 and the second equation remains the same 30 upon x minus y plus 21 upon x plus y is equal to 13 upon 2 now these are the two pair of linear equations we have to solve so how do we solve these two equations now see we, again we will try to solve it using the method of equating the coefficients but before that we need to convert it into linear form because here the denominators contain the variables so for solving this we can put 1 upon x minus y as a and 1 upon x plus y as b so here the denominators are x minus y so we have put 1 upon x minus y as a and here the denominators are x plus y so we have put the value of 1 upon x plus y is b. So what happens to the equations? The equations become 12a plus 14b 
equal to 3 and 30A plus 21B equal to 13 by 2. So these are the two equations now which we have to solve and get the values of A and B. So now equate the coefficients now. See 12, 5 is a 60, so multiply it by 5 and 32 is a 60, so multiply it by 2. So I am equating the coefficients. This becomes 60A plus 70B equal to 15 and if you multiply this by 2, 60A plus 42B equal to 13. You can subtract them now. 60A gets cancelled. 70 minus 42 is 28B and 15 minus 13 is 2. So that gives the value of B as 1 by 14. So the value of B comes out to be 1 by 14. Now I am substituting the value of B here. That is 12A plus 14 times B. B is 1 by 14 equal to 3. So 12A is equal to 3 minus 1, 2 or A comes out to be 1 by 6. So students we have obtained the values of A and B now. So once we have obtained the values of A and B, now we can obtain the values of X and Y using two simple steps. So after this, since I don't have the space, I will do it here. So you can see the solution after this is done here. Now the value of A is 1 by 6, but what was A? A was 1 upon X minus Y. So 1 upon x minus y comes out to be 1 by 6 and 1 upon x plus y that is the b value of b it comes out to be 1 by 14. So from these two you have the two equations x minus y equal to 6 and x plus y equal to 14. Very easy now minus y plus y cancels 2x equal to 20 so x equal to 10 and if you put the value of x here that implies y is equal to 14 minus 10 that is 4. So you have the two answers here. Therefore, speed of boat in still water is x. So x is 10, so 10 kmph. And speed of stream is y, that is 4 kmph. So this is the exact way of solving questions on upstream and downstream the answer for this question is 10 and 4 so ajanya yes upstream means against the flow up when you go up obviously your speed is reduced so we have to subtract the two speeds and down when you go down your speed is increased so you have to add the two speeds yeah students those who have any doubt in this question they can either ask or take a screenshot of the screen screenshot of the exact solution of this question so as the case obviously the same question can come on vehicles other vehicles also wherein the speed of the wind will be given students who have not clicked the like button kindly do that i am sure you must be greatly benefited by these questions which I am solving on the board just for you. Okay, so I don't think there are many doubts. Let's have one more question today. This is again the question concerning speed and time. Now this question came in CBSE board exams two years ago also and it has been repeated one or two times before that also. So a very important question. Manoj, yes, the steps are very long. Uh, shortcuts, uh, you, uh, we can develop the shortcut for this but actually this live stream is for uh, routine students of school. So I am not telling the shortcuts and telling the exact procedure through which they can score four or five marks whatever the marks are allotted to this question so for the shortcuts you can see the channel speed and time questions are already given on the channel using shortcuts 
Okay, let's have this question now. This is third question. A and B are two points. 150 kilometers apart. A car starts from A and another from B at the same time. If they travel in same direction they meet in 15 hours if they travel in opposite directions They meet in one hour. Find the speeds of two cars. Now again, a very important questions. Question one of the very important questions, students. So you need to watch this very carefully. And those who have missed the live stream of this important topic please do it later on in the evening when the video gets uploaded on the channel don't miss this important topic okay so let's solve this one now so whenever this question comes that there are two points on the highway and two cars are starting from that given two points then we'll have to follow a certain procedure now this is to be done in two cases see i'm doing it like this this is case one when they move in same direction and this is case two when they move in opposite directions Now suppose this is the point A and this is the point B and they are 150 kilometers apart. This is the given in the question. Now one car is starting from A and moving like this and another from B and moving like this. So the speed of A is greater. So they meet somewhere here at point C after 15 hours. So this is the first case that when they move in same direction, then they meet in 15 hours. Now the second case, this is point A and this is point B, they are 150 kilometers apart and the first car is traveling, traveling like this but the second car is traveling in opposite direction. So now they are meeting somewhere here at point C and this they do in one hour. So obviously when they travel in the same direction, this car will take longer time to overtake this car. So this is the point at which the car is overtaking. and this is done in 15 hours but they move in opposite direction they will meet very quickly because the distance is total distance of 150 kilometers is covered by both the cars now so we will have only one hour taken by the cars okay after this how do we frame the equations let us assume that the car which is starting from a has let speed of car at A be x kmph and speed of car at B be y kmph. So this is moving with x kmph speed and this is moving with y kmph speed again x and y. In this case you observe the distance covered by the first car is AC and the distance covered by the second car is BC and if you subtract AC and BC you get AB now this is a simple geometry this is simple geometry the total distance is AC if you subtract this much 
BC, then what we are left with is AB. But in this case, if you see AC and add it to BC, you will get AB. So here AB is obtained by subtracting AC and BC, and here AB is obtained by adding AC and BC. And now the thing will be very very easy. Now these are distances. What is the formula for distance? We need to apply formula for distance, which is speed into time. This is the formula what we will be applying now. So distance AC means speed into time. The speed here is x, and time taken is 15 hours. So time into speed. Time into speed is distance. So AC comes out to be 15x. And similarly, BC comes out to be again the time taken is 15, but the speed is y. So speed into time again the distance. This comes out to be AB. AB is 150. So here we have the first linear equation: 15x minus 15y equal to 150. Now you can cancel out the common factor 15. X minus y comes out to be 10. Now what about the other case? See here we have AC is the distance covered in one hour, so one x. One is the time and x is the speed, so one x plus BC one y. What is it? AB. AB is 150. So the second equation is x plus y equal to 150. Now students, we have two very simple linear equations here which can be solved very very easily. Now see, we can write them one below the other. So x plus y is 150. This is the this equation and second equation is x minus y equal to 10. Just put a line plus y minus y gets cancelled. So x plus x is 2x and 150 plus 10 is 160. So here you have the value of x 80. So x comes out to be 80 and if you substitute the value of x here, that implies 80 plus y is 150, so y comes out to be 7. So students here we have the speeds of the two cars, x that is the speed of first car is 80 kmph and the speed of second car is 70 kmph and this is the exact solution of this very very important question, I am sure this will help you a lot and if you have not understood anything you can ask but don't leave this question for board exams of class 10th this question if you have solved once you will not forget it but you, if you have not solved it once then it will be very difficult to solve it in the first attempt in examination when you have not seen the question so just get on get on with this one and i am sure these three questions which we have solved today the one partly by train and partly by car that was the first question second was the motion of the boat upstream and downstream and third one was when the distance on a highway that between the two points on a highway are given so these are the three important questions which i wanted to discuss today okay you want a screenshot i'll just uh, go out of the frame you can just click the photo and see the exact steps which you have to perform to get full marks in examination Arif Khan are you doing great job keeping okay sure uh, thanks for the compliment and uh, surely I will be doing this throughout the session and all the class 10 students they can be greatly benefited because it is like a free tuition at your doorsteps without paying any fee Nafiz Zehra, thank you so much. Hardik, why we find distance? Because the distance AB is known. So that is why we have brought everything in form of the distance. Whatever variable is known, that is the formula which we have to apply. So Ajanya, book for seven class and class seven and class eight, you can refer many books which are available. Uh, you know, market is full of refreshers. I don't want to comment on the social networking. You can get in touch with me on WhatsApp. I'll surely tell you some of the books, good books. 
Ayub Khan surely ranking tests. Uh, I'll uh, that is on my target. I'll surely do it someday. Vanchita, uh, I hope uh, you have understood that. And uh, any problems you can surely ask. Renu Bhatia, thank you so much. Yeah, Mumucha, you've been watching that uh, uh, channel for quite long now. Thanks for that. And uh, surely for competitive exams, I'll come up with a lot many live streams in future. Please do sh uh, keep sharing what you have been do always doing. Sojane, if you want my WhatsApp number, I can surely give it to you. It is already mentioned on the channel. You can just see the channel. You will find my WhatsApp number there. Swastik, I wrote one into because I just wanted to tell you that it is time into speed. So time into speed is distance. That is why I wrote one here. So students, I think you have clicked the stamp of this important question. Three questions are covered in, in, in this live stream and I hope this will be greatly beneficial to you. Uh, Manu, thank you so much. If you are understanding this, the purpose is solved. Rajesh, you can see, look for my uh, WhatsApp number on the channel itself. It's there. Kamalji, thank you so much for the compliment. Durga, thank you. Thank you, dear students. I think you are all great and uh, it is a pleasure bringing these kind of videos to you. I feel so motivated when you feel that you are being benefited that because that is the purpose of bringing those videos to you. So students, that's it for today because I don't want to have lot many concepts in a day. So you can practice these three type of problems uh, for today. And uh, tomorrow I will have some miscellaneous mixed questions of uh, this is the important topic of pair of linear equations in two variables. So tomorrow's topic is again statement problems, but this time no specific concept. And this time it will be a competition between you guys so that you can gear up and you can show that you have understood the previous live streams. So I'll wait for your company tomorrow on the channel. Surely do join in at 7.30 p.m. tomorrow. Till then, it's good night from Suresh Agarwal. God bless you.